morning, our viewers. We, once more, we're back again to study the Word of God. Our morning devotion today is going to talk about a certain young man whose mother really taught him to fear the Lord. But the circumstances of life forced him to go away from God. Are you a follower of God due to circumstances? So you're welcome to our morning devotion on this blessed day of July the 27th. And our morning devotion is simply entitled, A Prodigal Man in World War II. A Prodigal Man in World War II. Let's close our eyes for a word of prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, we've come to study your word. Be our teacher, be our guide. We're asking for the Holy Spirit to inspire us. In your precious holy name I pray. Amen. A prodigal man in World War II. For this my son, for this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. For this my son is dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Look, the chapter is 15 and the verse is 24. So during the World War II, way back, we see lots of things happened and a variety of things, tragedies really happened. We all know what happens in the war. We see the guns, the bombs, the soldiers, and death. I remember an incident in London where bombs were so great and people had to hide down where the trains pass. In the bridges, the underground bridges, where trains were passing. So that's how the World War II happened. However, during this World War II, a mother had her son. And Walter Flan Flandera was a professor of science in at Bogenhen, Bogenhenfen Adventist Seminary in Austeri Australia. And he happened to tell us what happened during the World War. His mother was a devoted Seventh-day Adventist lady. And every morning, he could tell his son about the goodness and the love of God. However, this son was so stubborn. He refused to open his heart to allow the Spirit of God to influence his life. That is what really happened. So, he was enlisted to join in the World War II. Now, he went to the war. And during his time in the war, he saw lots of problems. He saw his friends being killed. He saw innocent souls that passed away. We all know what happens in wars. Finally, he decided, he decided to reject the love of God. And he had a pocket Bible, a New Testament Bible, but he refused to open it all through the lifetime in the war. Now, the horrors of war had in Walter's heart and made him feel outrage and rebellion against the provider of God. He doubted the presence of God. He was saying, how can a loving God allow such suffering to happen? This concerns me and you. Do you get, have you ever, have you ever reached a moment and asked whether the true and loving God really exists? He was so troubled. He was so perplexed. And he decided to avoid the presence of God. 
Having seen the death of many of his fellow soldiers, he refused to admit that his life depended on God. Believing that at any moment he could also be a victim of war. So after seeing all those, he rejected God. Now that's where we all go wrong. We allow, choose to obey God due to the circumstances that are happening. But that is not true. God is always there in the bad time and in the good times. He is always there. Finally, such is life moments, such is life moments come in lives of young people in which the faith that was transmitted and taught by the parents must become astronomers and personal. Sometimes during this transition, a crisis occurs that inmates initiates spiritual bankruptcy. There are also environmental factors and conditions that can cause doubt, insecurity, and frustrations. Friends, lots of times, circumstances happen in this turn to make us feel so frustrated and we doubt the presence of God. The crisis can be dramatic and final. However, God is no stranger. That despite the fact that the war is happening, the divorce is going on, they're hurting you at school, you've been given that letter that is taking you out of your job. That does not mean that God is in existence. God is no stranger to the process. His provisent his, provision, his providence is at work in the development of our experience. And we lead the events so that surprisingly and drawing on our sincerity, we reign our faith. Despite the fact that there is turmoil, despite the fact that the world is coming to an end, despite the fact that poverty is at its pick currently in Uganda, it's not an indicator that God is not in existence. God still exists. Long time ago, a young man was having the worst part of his life. He happened to be having lots of sons and daughters. He was rich, but one day, Everything turned away. But this young man, despite whatever was happening, he simply said, the Lord has given and the Lord has taken. May his name be glorified. And this was Job. He refused to deny the existence and the power and the presence of God. The devil did not only take his riches, but he happened to even touch his skin. But he refused to deny the presence of God. Why? Was, why could he maintain this? It is simply he had a very strong relationship with Jesus Christ. And he knew Jesus as a friend. My brethren, let our relationship with Jesus Christ be personal, not on material gains. That is what Jesus requires from us. Finally, are you distancing yourself from your, from your faith? Have you thought about leaving the church? Do you feel overwhelmed by the unknowns that are driven into your head? If so, I want to remind you that the Lord is willing to show you clearly that there is a God in heaven. You're trying to distance yourself from God. God is longing to show you his greatness. May God bless you, brethren, as we continue to study his word, as we remember and try to seek his presence in our daily lives. Just like Walter Landera during the World War, he thought God was absent simply because of what he was going through. 
as Christians, we are supposed to worship God in all circumstances. May God bless you and thank you for listening. Let's pray. Father Lord, please help us learn that you're always present. The world is full of many challenges that tend to lessen our faith. But let us remember that God is real. In your precious holy name I pray. Amen. Thank you.